Hello and welcome to another episode of The Other Side of Sales. I'm Ashley Early. And I'm Su Singh. And today I am so stoked because we are joined by Jackson Liu. And Jackson pulled a bit of an audible on us that was actually kind of cool. So we were supposed to record with Jackson about two and a half weeks ago. And I ate something that didn't agree with me. So we had to push the recording at the last minute. Jackson prepared this really cool prospecting strategy. And this is the drop. So you have to keep listening so you can hear what exactly he did. And he shared it on LinkedIn before we recorded this podcast. So I saw this thing shared and he did a little bit of analysis on some stuff that I did and I was shooketh. So I am super excited to hear all about that, his journey as an Asian American in sales and a bunch of other stuff. If you're not familiar with Jackson, you should be, but he is a top of funnel revenue growth leader, the host of the One Up Sales Development Podcast, which if you're in sales dev, you absolutely need to be listening to. The founder and creator of Sales Dev Unite, which is a private micromanaged online community of sales development leaders from across the globe that is sharing free and valuable insights through content strategy. So Jackson, thank you for writing me an intro that I can actually read and for being so flexible and joining us on the other side of sales. We are so excited to have you. Ashley, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, I've been a big fan of you as you've been a fan of me and Sue as well. Um, really happy for and proud of the things you guys are doing in terms of the other side of sales and really pushing it out there and giving, helping others give a voice and perhaps a vision to, and uh, really happy to be here. So thank you. Awesome. So let's go ahead and start the same way we always start. Just tell our audience who isn't familiar with kind of your journey. What, what's kind of walk us through your, how you got into sales and what your, what that's been like for you so far and how you got to the point where you're running sales dev unite and the one up sales dev podcast yeah absolutely so growing up as a you know poor asian american we never really had much my parents are vietnamese refugees you know they came they migrated from vietnam we were from the vietnam war and stuff and we where i grew up around you know it wasn't the best but it wasn't like super poverty or super bad uh but there, there was quite bad some stuff too as well uh never had any role models you know my relatives who went to school and college, Jerry, all got a degree in accounting, it's our accounting or finance, numbers people who work in the back. And that's initially how I started off majoring in accounting. But, you know, I was never much of a person who was a number guy, not really quite a guy who sits there and just like to crunch numbers and play with formulas. <clears throat> but it was then there, I was going to a community college in Orange Coast College in Costa Mesa. And there was this one professor by the name of Dennis Morgan. Dennis Morgan was the head of marketing and he also taught professional selling. He was a sales professor and he sold me into sales. For the first time in my life, I got a straight A in all of his classes. The rest was like C's and D's. Hence I had graduated 2.2 GPA. Still don't hey, care what others say. <laughs> what what do you what do you call the what do you call the guy who graduates last in his class from medical school? Um, that's a good one. What doctor? Doctor. As long as you graduate, no one cares. Oh, it's a checkbox. <laughs> Nobody cares if you graduate last in your class, first in your class. Once you get yeah. that first job, who cares? You graduate last in your class from medical school, you're still a doctor. You graduated. Yeah. You the, who cares? You graduated. Yeah, yeah, I know. No, I'm, I'm really happy about that. You know, even though it took me 10 years to get my undergrad degree, um, you know, I'm really happy because I live in a household with two brothers, you know, one older, one younger. Both of them are college dropouts. And, you know, I, 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 in, in life, I always thought that growing up, I have a really small mindset because we have no role models. I always thought like, hey, look, you, to be successful in life, you got to get a college degree, get a corporate job somewhere. You get a salary, benefits, 401k. Woo, you made it, but totally different. But anyways, um, Dennis Morgan sold me into sales. I took one class, one class, and it was professional selling. And just the way he taught the class, how he was able to express himself. And he was the one that got me to start reading the first book ever, uh, which was how to, how to make, how to, how to, Win Friends and How to Make Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And I remember he stated that sales is everywhere. This is from his word. He says, 
Jackson, the whole class, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, there's always somebody selling. If you go to a Starbucks, you walk in that door, you see that wooden environment, you smell the coffee bean, you hear the coffee bean grinding, they're selling you the experience, the environment of Starbucks. And that right there just really caught my, 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 my head. And then people said, you know, uh, Jackson, you should always be in sales because you always been like a people person, you like to talk a lot, you like to communicate. And that's basically how I got started in sales. Uh, by just taking his class. And I remember he mentioned three things to me that I still hold on today. And this was uh, 20, uh, 2012. He say, Ashley, people do not buy for three reasons. And I call it the golden three. He said, people do not buy because they don't need you. They don't believe you. Or they can't afford you. So he says, you can't, people do not buy for three reasons. They do not, they don't need you. They do not believe you and they can't afford you. Um, so that's where I take in day in, day out. And it's so true now to own sales development, work my way up the ranks, entered, uh, and got my start in sales in retail wireless. And, you know, I won't talk too much there, but I will say something. And I think this stamps heavily with uh, SDRs who go into AE who never really had sales experience. Because when I first started, I started over at Sprint. And I remember just getting started for the first three months. I was really shy. I was scared to ask for the sale. I was scared to ask uh, uh, closing questions and really asking for, you know, some of my closing questions to see before you even go for the close. Like, hey, Ashley, what are your thoughts here? What do you think there? You know, I was just sitting there and go, hey, Ashley, welcome to Sprint. What are you looking for? Oh, I'm looking for an iPhone. Great. It's right there. And I just stand there, you know, <laughs> and they say, there's where's my check, right? I'm selling. No, this, yeah. No, they say there's a huge statistics, right? Why SDR to AE uh, fails and get fired is because, and I call it getting cracked. You got to get cracked. Like you got to get down to a point where you're either going to do it or you don't. And this is so true in retail wireless too, as well. And in life, like a lot of people that I trained at the time are fairly new. I told them, you got to get cracked. You got to do it. If you don't do it, you need to ask yourself, it's, it's probably not for you. Like it's, it's called like getting out that shell. Once you break that shell, all of a sudden, Ashley now will be asking Sue all these qualifying questions. And then you would actually be asking for next steps. Um, and I think that's the gap when it comes to SDR and AEs. Because, you know, the SDRs nowadays come in, no sales experience. They're just asking for a meeting, asking for a meeting. But what they don't have is the closing experience, asking what they call trial closes, right? So, hey, based on our conversation today, what are your thoughts now? Is there anything we can do to push this conversation forward? Um, who else should we have involved? What are your thoughts? I'd like to take the next steps. Yeah, those are all trial closes, right? Uh, and I think that's probably where the gap is because they don't know. Sometimes they ask too much where it gets commission breath. You know, you throw an objection out there and then they don't address the objection and they still try to close you. Bam, that's commission breath. Um, but, you know, just to uh, stamp it here, you know, a lot of people see me today. I, all these SDR and BDRs now reach out. You know, they see me as a top funnel sales dev strategist, podcaster, blogger, strategic elite prospector. But what they don't see is the journey, the journey that took me to get to this point, the journey that how I was a top and at T-Mobile, doing super great, turned down three manager positions, 3X MVP, all that stuff to make a horizontal jump into the unknown. I joined ADP's Long Beach office as an intern for 10 bucks an hour with no, no, no health benefits, no nothing. I was working part-time at T-Mobile, making 40 grand a year, full benefits, and I dropped all of that for ADP. My plan was simple. You know, I, I told my family, actually, they're also excited. They're like, man, this guy's a killer in sales, killer in sales. Dude, you're going to freaking kill it. I told him, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to find an outside B2B sales role, ADP, paychecks, CentOS, whatever. Smack that for 16, 18 months. Make a horizontal jump into Medtronic, do medical device sales, make six figures, bomb on everyone who ever looked past me. My sixth grade teacher, well, not my sixth grade teacher, but my best friend's sixth grade teacher, had a, uh, you know, it was family night to come in, told my best friend's family, parents, hey, tell them stay away from Jackson. You know, this guy's a really bad kid. He's either going to end up in jail 
or dead on the street. For like the next three, four days, I realized they were kind of ignoring me. And then I pulled them and said, hey, what's going on, man? And then he told me what happened and it still affects me from today. Till this day, till this day. Cook School Elementary School, the person that said that at teacher, her name was Miss Liebengood. But I, if she's ever, Miss Liebengood, if you're ever listening to this, I made it and I forgive you. <laughs> no, and it's, um, it's, it's fascinating how many, how many people have that. Like, you want to get me to do something? Tell me I can't. Yeah. Tell me I can't do it. No, like, I'll do it just yeah. in principle to piss you off. Yeah. As much as for my own good. Like, I can do something for my own good. It's like, yeah, okay, maybe if it's good for me, I'll do it. But if it's like, yeah. I know maybe this is how my, maybe this is how I actually get my butt into a gym. I t- I'll get my husband to start saying I can't work out or I'm not athletic or I, I shouldn't do that because I'm going to get injured. Cause then I'll just do it just to spite him versus yeah. like, actually like if it's for, it's good for me, uh, wine's good for me. It's fine. It's good. But proving someone else wrong <laughs> on there. There you go. There you go. Um, but just to loop it back here real quick. So I, you know, I don't know what it takes for an ADP intern to get hired on. Uh, my five weeks duration there, I did a total of 5,000, like 20, 3,025 dials. I touched like 280 decision makers. I clocked 38 appointments, closed one net new, one net new. And I even sourced them, uh, one, one huge deal from my cousin that was working at his meat company. I asked him for a favor and it was known as what they call a total source deal at ADP. It's like the full HR service. So it's huge. Um, and I even made a presentation for them on Prezi for the day in the judge, they call it judgment day. And I, I was guaranteed I thought I got it. You know, so here I am. I left everything I ever had, went to ADP, dressed up nice every day like this for 10 bucks an hour, looking, you know, trying to make it and give that presentation only to come in to not make the cut. And they said, look, we like you, you're fully energetic, but unfortunately, we gotta let you go. I was like, what? And that right there, my jaw dropped, everything around me froze. Um, you know, I drove on a four or five freeway cl- crying, screaming. I felt like a total failure. Intended to that for my next two. And then I found out about sales development. I was like, wait a minute, sales development. So th- there's outside sales and there's this whole other thing where you don't even have to go anywhere. It's inside sales. I was like, oh, snap. Hold on. This is when I figured out uh, David Delaney podcast, 10 pound. And this is, why, this is why a lot of people ask me, why do you like James Baldwin so much? Because this episode was the, like one of the first episodes I heard on. And I just fell in love because he too came from a retail wireless background and he faced his adversity too, but made it in the tech game. And, you know, he helped me a lot around the way. And that's why I hold him sincerely. Hey, shout out to you, James Baldwin. You're uh, listening to this, man. Um, yeah, definitely another but- friend of the pod. Yeah, there oh, it yeah. is. That's my man. Uh, yeah, uh, James was James was in our was an early guest. He's he's a good friend. He's a he's a real good friend. He's a good egg. He's a like legitimately it. really yeah. good egg. Uh, but to 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 face it here is right. So here I am, dropped everything I ever had. And then my next two gig in terms of sales development was uh, these companies that never had a sales development program before. They're rolling out from ground zero. There was no SDR manager. They didn't even have a, te- a sales development. Uh, a sales engagement platform. Um, we didn't even have an SDR manager. And there was the messaging was all wrong. It's like that huge, big old paragraphs. Hey, Ashley, one, two, and three. This is what. And the message was: It's all about me. It's all about me. And it's all about me. And I got let go from from that, and I got let go again from a, the budget cut from the other one. Even though they told me, "Hey, <laughs> you're, you're not a great fit." After like two months, I was like, "Not even the third month," and only to find out it was a budget cut. The same day I hit up my SDR manager that was newly hired from that same company. Uh, his name's Travis Flack. Shout out to you, Travis. And I told him, dude, I'm fucking dude. I did the best I can. I got let go. And he's like, I just got let go too. I was like, oh, God damn. And uh, the marketing manager was let go all the same day. And that's how we figured it was a budget cut. But he's like, you know, you're out of all the reps there. You're one of the, the most top person that I believe like with four or more or five months, you would be like the top rep. And there was my turning point. Um, my cousins who are very successful at cash call, they make like 17, 18 grand a month. And they show me their commission check all the time. They always wanted me there for a very long time. And I told them, they set up a coffee date, man. Let's check it out. He says, all you need to do is get your MLO license. Once you pass, I'll get you in. The hourly rate is crap, 10 bucks an hour. 
nine bucks an hour, but it's all about the commission. But then you will be slinging from the hours. You will work about seven days a week, 60, 70 hours on average. That's a turnaround moment. And but but what what kept me to keep trying one more time was because doing loans, you don't need a college degree. I would feel it go to waste. And I'm the type of person who goes, all right, sales development, I got to find out, figure out what happened. If not, then, you know, I, it will always be in the back of my head. And this is when David Delaney picked me up to just um, wrap it up here with my experience there, you know, working over at 10 bound, a research sales development research and advisory firm, hundred percent focus on sales development. I was able to interview 25 plus SDR leaders in the space, like Nick Truman, Lauren Wadsworth, uh, Amy Johnson, and uh, Robert Simmons, all heavy hitters, picked their brain, the processes, what kind of challenge, and everything started to click. I was able to look back now and go, Ash, oh, damn. That's why Berk Street had a failed sales development program. The messaging is wrong, no sales, uh, no sales engagement platform, the process was off. That's why uh, Silverline had a failed sales development program. Their messaging was wrong. They didn't even have a sales engagement platform. Uh, they, and all, all marketing did was just throw over a list of target account and say, go get them. And I was able to look back and everything started to click for me. And things really got heavy for me when I uh, was brought on Better Girl. Shout out to Nico Hughes. Because I was, so I learned all this now, but I need to start doing hands-on. And Nico brought me under his wing, showed me the inside process, inside and out, of what it takes to, have a successful uh, outsourced outbound sales engine. Like you, you can have three reps. This is the process, this is what we need. This is how you build less, enrich, bam, bam, bam. And everything just starts to move out. And after everything that I been went, went through and I was able to throw my own recipe in the mix upon uh, ramp time. And I was like, this guy just created a fucking sales alignment masterpiece, you know? And that's how I came up with the link chart analysis the PPP, RRR, and SSS framework, which is the PPP is for um, internal use, people process persistence. Uh, the other one is just to support the link chart analysis to help it scale, which is the research retention recon. And, um, short, sweet, simple is basically, a lot of people talk about, hey, Ashley, you know what, SDR, BDR, when you send an email, it shouldn't be no more than 120 words. It shouldn't be no more than three paragraphs, four paragraphs. From my analysis and what I found work, no. Don't, you don't need to stick to that. As long as it's short, sweet, and simple, do whatever you want. But it has to be short, sweet, and simple. And um, here we are today. Got me chatting with you. Jackson, I'm kind of curious to you know while you moved into sales development and stuff. Um, let's touch upon more on the angle of being Asian in the sales environment were they more like you was there anyone uh, you know yeah did you um, feel you know, god yeah it was you know it's it it's tough and i had a lot now I'll, I'll share this here like when, when i joined adp as an internship there was 10 interns i was the only asian there um most of them were you know white no blacks uh, we had one Hispanic, but he was light skinned, so you can he can apply for a white guy. You know, we all have those friends, right? They're Hispanic, but they look white. <laughs> and you know, I and they're like, that's just that's just how it is. Um, I remember one time too, I had a really bad experience when I this is when I just left T-Mobile. Uh, There's a nice city around the area called Irvine. I went to interview for a cybersecurity space. This they is all Southern for California for people who aren't familiar with like geography and stuff. These are all bit, these are all cities in kind of the LA metro area. Yeah, you bet. Um, Southern California, Orange County, to be specific. Uh, and I remember this one cybersecurity space. I came in, shot my resume, just T-Mobile resume, you know. And there's just uh, I was I was actually uh, touched by a recruiter by them, and went in there. Really nice tech office, glass full building. Met with like the hiring manager. He was like a VP or director at the time. And big old white guy, handsome looking guy. His partner is this white dude, skinny dude from Europe. From Europe. And I remember he came in and was like, okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, thanks for being here. Give me this opportunity uh, to uh, 
interview and give, give myself a shot. And I was just like showing him all my success that I did uh, at T-Mobile with the rewards that I have that I printed out. I use this as documentation for proof. The same one I have on post on LinkedIn under there. And I remember he looked at it and he just threw it on the table as if like it wasn't nothing. And I saw that, I was like, gosh, man, that's, you know, that's messed up. And he looked at me and said, you know, you're in the B2C. This is the B2B area. Why should I hire you? And I was like, shit, this guy tried to test me. So I stood on my ground. I looked him straight up in the eye and I said, you know what? You know what, Ashley? You shouldn't hire me. Maybe you shouldn't. And he's like, wait, what? What do you mean? I was like, but you should only if you're willing to put out the time and train me and coach me. Look, I know I'm from BDC. I don't have that cold calling experience. I tried a little bit at T-Mobile. It didn't work out. So you would have to sit there and train me and only if you believe in me. If not, it's not going to work out <laughs> in the first place. And I told him that. And uh, at the end of the interview, he's, he said, hey, I really respect that. You know, we'll, we'll let you know what happened. Um, obviously, they passed on me. But, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's one of the best, being an Asian American, like just being there in a the room for white people. Um, it is what it is. And I remember one other time interview process I had. God damn. Fuck, I hate when it hits me. You know, I thought about this. I was like, you know, I can't wait to share this because it's a, uh, it opens a lot of scars, but you know, everything happened for a reason. It's a great company in Irvine too called Altrix. Altrix is like a, mm -hmm. a data analysis company. I remember I made it to the final cut where they invited us on site and they gave us lunch and stuff. Um, 10 people in there, my, me, the only Asian, uh, one black guy, very talented, and the rest were all white. Tall, bright smiles, just graduated from college. We shared information, we bonded, we got together, and we did group projects. And they're like, damn, uh, I'm the only one there. So it's, it's, we were applying for an SDR role. And this was what's after Berg Street Systems when I got my position to eliminate to company restructuring. And I was the only person there that has experience. And I, I thought I had the shot, you know, like the highest chance I at least make it or something. Uh, only to know that I didn't make the cut reached out to the other two people that we stay in touch on LinkedIn that they got it, but then they're just fresh out of college with no experience. And I'm sitting there like, damn, yo. Uh, and I looked at the sales team though, cause we they introduced us to the sales team. Hey, here's the rep we have now. Here are the AEs and majority of them are all, you know, how to say it, uh, ca Caucasian. <laughs> <laughs> as the as the token white person on this call, the correct term is white as fuck. <laughs> not good. But it, it happens all the time. And you know what, Ashley yeah. and Sue, it's not just me. It's not yeah. just me. It's a lot of other people. But I tell you what, these kind of things like happen a lot. It happens all the time. And uh, I tell you, when it does, it 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 really sucks. But the only thing you can do is you gotta you always gotta push forward. And I'll, I'll say this too. It, I think what's scary to me about that is how often it is, how often it is unintentional. Oh, it's, yeah. it's one thing if it's just straight racism, it's straight profiling. In some ways that's easier. If people are being intentional, I mean like, no, I only want this. Mm -hmm. Like in a weird way, that's easier. Cause it's like, okay, I can either deal with that fallacy or I could just choose to avoid you because it's super obvious. It's when it's subtle and it's, oh, well, the candidates aren't as good. They don't have the experience. No one applies. It's when it's that subtle stuff that it's really dangerous. Um, and I'll, I'll say this, it's fascinating to me because I have some history with that company. That's a great example of a company that said and did all the right, said, said all the right things, but the results didn't match their talk. There it mm -hmm. is. You, you just hit the nail on the head. Which is which is so much of tech. We're, we see that all over the place these days. Yeah, I, I'm you know, curious. Just, you you mentioned that 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 that's a lot of that that was. I think um, I I don't think I'm overstepping too much either. And that that's that's almost a mild trauma in you that you're looking at like, hey, I went and I laid it all out on the table, and the only reason I can find that I didn't get that was this. The only that's pattern. The only thing I can think of. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, you know, another another one too. Like right when I graduated college from this is like T-Mobile, right when I graduated in 2018 and making a, a leap. Um, I'm, are you guys familiar with a company called Kions? Kions. Yeah. It's a Japanese uh, company that specializes in making manufactured safety devices for okay. 
ma manufacturers who like, you know, they have all these crazy machine that's moving and basically they put down these laser devices. So if you walk in that place, the, the machine will stop. So that won't cause damages. Um, anyway, super high class, made it to the final round. They flew me from here to Chicago for their onsite with all these other people. And I kid you not, the office was slick as hell. It was like the men in black. You walk in, zzz, glass door, all white, everything <laughs> bright lights. I'm like, oh, God damn. Uh, lunches, catered, everything. They flew all of us out there, right? And I stood, I stayed in touch with one guy that I met there and a few other people. And again, I was the only Asian, the oldest dude. Everyone there was like young, white, tall, great smiles. And, you know, I, I was the only person there with sales experience. Everyone just graduated college. Here I am, came out just out of college too, but a little bit older, you know, dark skinned Asian with jacked up too, because I don't have braces, never got it yet, but I will soon <laughs> coming up. Um, and I remember I just like, like, oh, pitch me, pitch me. Like these, they did, we did all these activities and I, I, I could have sworn I would have at least get one offer, right? And because I remember the final stage interview, I was chatting with someone and they really liked me, uh, but only to come back to say, didn't make the cut again. And I stayed in touch with the other dude. The other dude made it. And the only thing I can think of was, you know, it's white. Yeah. yeah. I just and came it's out of college. Japanese I company, experience. right? Yeah. Kiosk. Yeah, and I was like, sweet Japanese company. Oh, okay. Yeah. You use yeah. our brains, but you don't want us to sound. You don't want us. Uh, it's like, you yeah. know, you tell the kids shouldn't be heard. Yeah. You, you want kids, but don't be heard. Yep. And, yeah. you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, uh, does it suck? Yeah, of course. But you know, you uh, you have to be resilient. It doesn't work out. That's not the right company for you in the first place, anyways. Yeah, yeah. I think if uh, you know uh, Asians would start feeling trauma for instance like this, we'd be all locked up in an asylum for sure. Yeah, and just to uh, piggyback, real quick, I think it's because also you know when you're in sales for a company tech sales or a very known fortune 500 um if you're in like the sales department you, and it requires you to do a demo or being on site you really are the face of the company so you know just to throw a scenario in here like last thing they you know just i just fucked up i might catch heat for it fuck it yeah uh, a room full of white people and you see a dark skin Asian like me coming in pitching you guys you guys be like what the fuck is this guy doing <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's interesting because this is the American, no, you're not wrong. And this is something American brands have really struggled with. I mean, I remember when I was a teenager and I'm, I'm a, Sue and I are a little older than you are, Jackson, I think. Um, oh, I don't think so. How are you? I, well, lady, a lady never tells. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm 32 in case you're okay. wondering. I'm a little older. I'm, I'm, I'm mid thirties. I'm mid thirties. And I think Sue's, Sue's timeline. I'm older too, I guess. Yeah. Oh, Age yeah. number, number, right? Uh, oh, until your back start hurting. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I'm drinking the wine? Yeah, um, I have two kids, so my back would hurt nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, I was going to say, I remember in the early aughts, and anyone who was in the US in the early aughts, there was this huge scandal with Abercrombie and Fitch, where it came oh, out that they were know. rejecting applicants because they didn't look like Abercrombie and Fitch employees. So basically, if you didn't look like one of their gorgeous little like Ralph Polo, you know, Ralph Polo, whatever, Ralph Lauren Polo model knockoffs, they would yeah. just full on be like, okay, thank you for your resume and trash it immediately. And they, yeah. they got filed with a few, a few lawsuits and stuff like that. And it's interesting. Tech is now reckoning with a lot of tech companies, not all, but a lot of tech companies are now reckoning with putting up a website that looks diverse but yet the faces of their company and their sales team are not. Their leadership yeah. is not. And yeah, I've okay. Worked with a, yeah, I, I worked with this company about 11 years ago. Really, really big company. Really big. Okay. Um, and, and they were hiring salespeople in India, right? But they wanted the Indian version of the blonde white woman. The Indian version of that, yeah. Yeah. So l lighter skinned, gorgeous, long, groomed yeah. hair. Hair, yeah. Oh, Makeup man. and heels, and you would wear like only Western clothes and skinny as a rail. Yep. Yeah. 
you know and it wouldn't matter they were actually they actually hired women for a sales team and you wouldn't believe what the previous experience was that lady was a gym instructor it you know it's just in in the u.s and jackson back me up on this yeah and i i feel bad saying this especially because now i have clients in this industry bed device and pharma you can yes. spot and and these women a lot of them are actually brilliant salespeople, but a lot of them are recruited specifically off of um, division one athletics. They're recruited off of marketing backgrounds. They're recruited off of their looks versus these other things. And then, and then they're trained up. It's actually one of the few industries where actually being a woman is legitimately an advantage. Granted, it's an advantage because they're being, in my opinion, hypersexualized. Now that said, I'm not in the industry. I don't know, but from the outside, it looks super ski, super skeevy. Um, and yeah. I, like I said, I have to say to it, I, ha- I have a, cl- I have a client right now that's medical devices and my team is pretty much 50, 50 and the company does a killer job making sure everyone's safe and everyone's respected and they're treated properly by the doctor's offices as well as by the company. So it's, it's interesting watching how what we're doing, even in tech is influencing other industries too, good and bad, but yeah. It's kind of bringing that kind of full circle in a strange way. Something you, you did something really interesting prepping for this, but this link chart analysis that you've mentioned a couple of times and we've kind of teased and I want to make sure we get this in. Explain what exactly that is and how you came up with it, because this is utterly fascinating. And I feel like it kind of ties in because you have this unique perspective that comes from your unique background, which is exactly why diversity of thought is so important because you get creative stuff like this. So explain what the link chart analysis is. Yeah, and so the link chart analysis really came to mind after I really became, I honed down on my craft. My end goal was, okay, you know, people talk a lot about breaking through the noise, doing video, audio, but how do you really, really, really take them down a journey? And, you know, I will wrap Better Growth, it's a full, it's a full funnel uh, B2B consulting agency. I learned about sales in the bottom funnel and I learned about a customer journey. So I started thinking to myself, when I do my outreach, how can I take you on a journey? And that's where the link chart analysis came from. And it came from really my, are you, have you watched Prison Break? Are you a show of that, Ash? Sue? I'm, Prison Break? I no? actually don't like cop shows and prison shows and stuff like oh. that. Just, I, it's, it's a little too... Yeah. I, I'm not really into the whole prison industrial complex doesn't do much for me, but I, I get it. But like, if I'm going to watch a prison yeah. break, I'm going to watch the rock. Okay. That's, that's fair. Anyways, <laughs> keep it short. There's this uh, prison uh, prison breaks. One of my favorite shows ever since I was a kid. I remember one of my favorite um, character was uh, Alexander Mahomes. Mahomes is a special agent. Who's uh, the guy who come out to catch the guys who broke out of prison. I remember him just running the link chart analysis himself. And it's, it's, a, it's an approach, it's a way of thinking. It's like, okay, I have a board out here, right? Who's Ashley? Who's Sue? Where have you been? What have you done? You know, where did you work at? And then they're just tying red strings on there. It's like, it's like looking for a, a murder, a serial killer. Where have they been? What have, are they doing? What are the interests? And the end goal is that, you know, to predict where you would be so that when the, the, the end goal is that by the time you get there, I'll be there. And that's where the link chart analysis came out. And I was able to visualize it through some, you know, like mirror, I use mirror.com is how I uh, put in the visualization. And then I realized I found a gap. I was like, holy shit. Most people just do personalization. They find one thing about you, they tie that in, and then you never hear about it again. They're just, because I was, I started out like that originally, right? You're sitting there, hey, Ashley, podcaster, you know, send it away. But then, the link chart analysis now ties everything in and it plants the seed. And what I mean by that is it plants the seed for the next step. And the next step job is to have you recall the previous step. And my, 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 my approach to this for the link chart analysis is that when I, when I done correctly, I've done research and it's like, this is for the tier A large enterprises people. And I really want to catch you and get your attention is that 
my, 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 my thought process is that when I do all of this, right, if you were to investigate me like I'm some sort of fucking serial killer murder or something and you see all these messages, you put it up on the board, you would see how it connects each other, like the red strings and dots. And that's basically how I came up with the link chart analysis approach and it's to deliver an experience to you through audio, visual, and text and GIF. And that's how Wait, I came hang up with hang the link hang chart hang analysis. Did, did I just hear GIF? Yeah. Just, oh, we're gonna have this conversation now. Yeah, okay. and I'll, I'll I'll tell you this. Um, this is um my the philosophy that I learned from Jim Rohn. He talks about minor versus mm -hmm. major, right? Minor minor time versus major time. So here here's my here's minor time thinking about the prospect. Here's minor time put updating the CRM about the prospect. Here's minor time thinking about what to say about the prospect. Here's major time being in the presence of the prospect so how do we do that well we find out what you're what you've been doing what what it means to you and we find out what you value value is the key word here value is what's valuable to you mm -hmm. you know you can reach out to three people with the same title and they all value something else so you tie that in with personalization and relevancy time delivered in a multi-channel engagement concept Follow, hit them where they're most active in with the least noise. That's how you get them. So walk through kind of what that, like it, well, link, check out the show notes if you haven't already. We'll do the exact example where Jackson went through and did a link chart analysis on me, um, which was fabulous and thoroughly creepy in a, in a very complimentary way. And it's, yeah. it's interesting too, because I, I tell one of the things I always describe SDR work, especially as professional stalking, because that's kind of what we're doing. Yeah. It's basically, I will keep asking you to talk to me until you actually talk to me. But two, I, I love this, that you were inspired by prison break, which was this arguably slightly trashy network drama that ran for a few years in the mid aughts. Right. Yeah. Um, um, it's also, and just, sorry to cut you off. It's also, uh, I, I kind of like this, uh, I don't know, fascination about serial killers. I'm not, not I'm a serial killer myself. No. I watch a lot of, like, yeah. you know, the, the Night Stalker and like Ted Bundy and stuff like that. And I, I, I look at them, I study them and I say, look, what they're doing to catch their victims and then, you know, fucking kill them and shit, whatever. I'm not a killer to put us down here. Okay, guys, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not a creep or whatever. Okay. You kill um, quotas. Yes. There you go. I killed quota. Uh, but if you take their their mindset and methodology, right, and you know if you think about it, the ultimate SDR and BDR out there, they all have the same characteristics. What that is is, hey, look, like a serial killer, they will track you in your tracks, and then they will strike you when you least uh, expect it, and that's how you catch their attention, break through the noise. So let me walk you through it real quick. Uh, you know, at my previous company, I was working. Uh, prospecting for uh, the company itself. And there's one person that was on the podcast. If you read the blog in there, it's a run through mm -hmm. the LCA analysis approach. And the messaging was so good. You know, most most people would just get like a no, hey, you know, that's good stuff. But the messaging I got back from him was like a job offer. You know, he wanted to see if I'd be open to come on his company. And the way I did that was through the LCA to itself, who he is, what he value. And the email was just like, hey, look, you mentioned on this podcast episode on sales love about revenue. I'm curious, would you be open to learning more how uh, we can help you in terms of revenue achievement on that? Send out an email, uh, just tie in the revenue podcast. I sent a connection request. I just put quote unquote podcast. And then he connected my, he accepted my connection request same day. So that means I know I have his attention. He's, nor, most reps would, right when they get a connection request, what do most reps do? They are to send you a video or a voice audio or text right off the bat. Uh, I played games with this guy who's the head of BDR. He accepted my connection request. He's waiting for me to send something. So I waited two days. The third day, he, uh, the third day I, uh, I noticed he opened my email again. So what I do, I sent him a GIF of myself with the sticky note, waving hello that says, hi, his name is Vince. Hi, Vince. Check your LinkedIn. So it's a GIF of me. That's it. It's just a GIF of me writing a note, showing him that. Look, at it, direct him to LinkedIn. He played it. It was his own voice in the recording podcast. And I said, hey, look, you mentioned this on, a, on the Alert podcast about revenue. Would you be open to learning more? And 
that's how you do it. I love, I love the idea of using people's own voice in their prospect. That's the thing I don't think a lot of people do, and especially with how many podcasts and stuff there are. It, it like, that doesn't take that much effort. And yet I think you're the first person that's ever fed me my own words, literally. Even you know, in, I, and, and it was in fake prospecting. <laughs> yeah. And I, I know we're getting closer to our end too, but I just want to throw it out there too, real quick. You know, uh, for me, really, what sales development really is to really be successful at it. Uh, one of the best ways is I call it finding dirt. You got to find some sort of dirt about them and then you use it against them, tied in with personalization relevancy of what you do. You know, and you just basically find dirt. And um, that's, that's how you do it. It's just, you're just, you're just trying to have a conversation, you know, like how we are right, right now, uh, Ash, Sue, we just want to chat. All right, perfect. Uh, this has been fantastic, but now we end the show the same way we always do, with some fun. Um, we'll start with a series of rapid fire questions, nothing serious, just say the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. So what is your morning routine? I wake up, I do not check my notifications. I do touch my phone, but I do not check my notifications. Um, it's because when you, when you react the first 10, 20 minutes when you wake up, you're in alpha state of mind, all you would be doing is reacting. You wanna be a thermostat. No, you wanna you want be a thermometer, I'm sorry. You wanna set the setting, you don't wanna react to the setting. I love that, all right. I feel like you've mentioned a few on this episode, but I'm curious, pick one person who's had a significant impact on your career that you're grateful for? James Baldwin. James Baldwin. Why? And what is your pump-up song? My pump-up song, it's um, it's Club to Death. Uh, I forgot what the artist's name, but I've been listening to it a lot lately. Um, Club to Death is like the motivational beat things. Okay, you guys heard of it? It's called, I'm, I'm sure you heard of it. I, I think the artist like, UK or something like, or Finland. I don't know, I fucking can't pronounce his name, but I just type in Club to Death by uh, on YouTube and um, it was played in the Matrix too, I believe. Coming soon to the other side of sales playlist on Spotify. What's <laughs> one thing you wish you'd learned earlier? You know, this is uh, it's a really good question. I honestly, I, I wish I learned early on about what it really takes to be successful in sales development. Um, I get it. A lot of techs out there has great program. You bring someone on fresh in law school, consider them lucky, but you know, I, I still have no great, but I, I, I wish I learned about this, about tech sales and the opportunity we have today way earlier on. Cause I think that would have made a significant difference. What book has had the biggest impact on your career? How to win friends and influence people by David Carnegie. Really, to wow. have, they, they state to, wow. to from the like, you really have to have a genuine interest. Be authentic. Look them in the eye and say, how are you? Like a lot of people, I'll, I'll give you a quick example here for Sue and Ashley. You know, if someone's just coming on a podcast, what I don't really care and I like about, hey, yeah, you know, I'm good, I'm bad. There's results, 100% the plan, 20%, 120% plan. Thanks for having me. To be likable, what David and uh, Carnegie said would be something like, hey, Ashley, Sue, thank you so much for having me on a podcast today. You know, I really love and appreciate what you guys have been doing in terms of the other side of sales. Your episode with Daisy Chubb, Shedding Light for Asian American Sales has got to be one of my favorite episodes there because I can relate so much. I'm, I'm just really happy to be here. And I will take all that flattery. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. All right. Yeah. What is... Take it a little more serious. What's one way that someone could have been a better ally to you? A better ally. You know, this is um, a really good question too. One way it's really that they genuinely want to help. Uh, I recently went through a really dark path earlier this year in terms of mental health too. Friends, I thought I had friends since junior high who I was there for day in, day out. They looked at me, to, they looked the other way and um, just throw it in there, right? I had some trouble with, uh, with addiction, right? You know, if you, you can't just look the other way and tell them don't do it anymore. You really want to help. You really want to come in and say, okay, you want to hit them with what I like to call the five whys. What's the problem here? 
Why is it a problem? What's the desired outcome? Who's responsible for it? And what else can we do? Or what, what else, what other outcomes would we like to have? Go in there and really dive deep rather than just saying, damn, Ashley, you, you did that? You can't, don't do it anymore. Or, hey, Sue, that was you? I, I can't chill you no more, man. And I think that's uh, mm -hmm. one way. And what's one way you're working to be a better ally for others? Yeah, I genuinely help as much people as much as possible. Uh, my doors are always open. For instance, I, uh, I tend to listen. Back in the days, I just talk over them. And the next thing, once you answer a question I ask, I have another question ready for you right off the bat. Um, how I'm helping today is really I don't judge anyone. I don't look past you. I don't look through you. I look at you. Why are you doing the things you do? What's the story behind it? What's the why? And what can I do to help you and support you in your line of work? It's just like sales development today. You know, there's a great story about like a war story, like out of a hundred people, and I'll give an example here, out of a hundred people who tries out sales development, 80 of them shouldn't even be there. 10 of them are just targets. 10 of them are the targets where they go, oh, it's not working out for me, I'm out. Nine are fighters. These are the fighters that keep on going on. They lose, they eat shit, they keep on going on. They get let go back to back, get go let, let go back. That's ADP, Berk Street, Silver Line. And when I finally master my craft, you become that one. That one's a warrior. And I am that sales development warrior. I love that. All right, last, certainly not least, what is your guilty pleasure at the end of a long day? Um, <laughs> it's YouTube. I have YouTube premium. I subscribe to a lot of, um, one of it, my favorite one is uh, this guy named Long, Long Beach Griffey. He does skits. Growing up, I, I just love jokes, Dave Chappelle. And that's my, my music, my uh, sales event rap video was actually inspired by him. How you can just play two different characters with the right recording. And it's just my, the way I uh, decompress and just disconnect for a bit. But yeah, I do a lot of YouTube. And, um, I'm into cooking too, so I watch a lot of cooking shows and like little shorts and cooking stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess YouTube premium. <laughs> I love that. Awesome, Jackson, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, how can our audience find you? How can they get in touch? Yeah, you can just find me on LinkedIn. Um, you know, Jackson, uh, it'll be, it's JT, L-I, JT Leo. That, or if you want to be strategic about it, hit up my blog at salesdebunite.com and then submit your info there. Uh, but other than that, my, I'm fairly open. You know, my number is on there too. You can shoot me a text, whatever. Uh, but yeah, LinkedIn will be the way to go. Yeah. And we'll put all the links in the show notes, but it has been so lovely having you on. Thank you for coming on, sharing your perspective. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a review on your podcast catcher of choice. Don't forget to like, and subscribe, maybe share on LinkedIn or hit us up on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on OSOS underscore pod on Instagram at other side sales. Share what your favorite moments are. Share some clips. Hit us up. Let us know what who else you'd like to hear from. And with that, we will talk to you next week on another episode of The Other Side of Sales.